My name is Casey Anderson. I'm a wildlife filmmaker, uh, adventurer, explorer. When I came to Nepal, I came here to film tigers. But when I got here, I met the people. I fell in love with the people. They love the forest in its entirety. And that includes the tigers and the rhinos and the elephants and the things that threaten their life every day. Because it is part of the forest and without those animals, the forest wouldn't be able to give back to them. But yet, this is the front lines to some of the most extreme wildlife conflict on the planet. But this is where the first lady was killed over there. About a month ago, two local village ladies came out here to collect firewood. When a tiger came in and attacked the lady here, her friend was over there and came over to actually try to save her life. When the tiger turned and attacked her, killing her, and then actually dragged her off, started to consume her there. And as they gathered the bodies, the tiger went away, and no one knows where the tiger is today. I was in the community forest when the tiger attacked me. He spun me around and knocked me to my knees. You, you, you started elbowing it in the head? Yeah. Boom, boom, and then it ran, jumped away. Severed the tendons in my arm and eventually took my eyesight. When I first came to Nepal, I came here to track tigers. Tigers are super elusive. They live in this thick jungle and dense grasslands. And tracking's difficult here. There is a way you can track tigers, and that way is to listen to the forest. There is a very specific animal saying very specific things. A monkey might be saying tiger. A deer might be saying tiger. And if you learn to listen to that sound, you know where the tiger is. So this idea was born. How can we use artificial intelligence to bring back this lost language? Using technology and very old language of the forest, a language we used to know very well, bringing them together to protect tigers and to protect people. This project can only work if it has a dream team. We've got Rajan, who's one of the best trackers and conservationists in the area. I'm a predator specialist. I've concentrated on human predator conflict for decades. And then I've got the best bioacoustics team on the planet, Dr. Angela Dassau and Dr. Arik Kirschenbaum. So the first goal that our group had was one, to get verified recordings of predator warning calls. We are setting up our, these acoustic recorders that we call caracals. We have those running 24 seven. So at this stage, they're listening to everything. Uh, we wanna know what the soundscape is in this environment so that we can ultimately filter most of that out and only keep the predator warning call. The other element is a little bit more interactive. One lucky team member <laughs> gets to be the tiger um, and crawl across the, the forest floor trying to elicit alarm calls. We do that for only about 15 minutes, um, but you just want to get enough of a recording that we get that sample size. So when you have a deployed system, like we're intending to as a warning system, there are many different parts that need to fit together. Data need to flow from one part to another. We have now radio-enabled devices, so they're now broadcasting any deer alarm calls back to the base station. We've got the red right there. That's now 11. It's pretty We're good. good. Yeah. It's working. There's devices in the jungle sending information to a laptop, and we're sitting there watching it on the screen. It's amazing to see this working. So imagine this, there's people out in the forest and a tiger starts to move through the community forest. Chital deer start alarming in the forest. Maybe they've spotted a, a tiger. The Caracal devices will automatically detect that this is a Chital alarm call and send a message to the repeater device. The base station generates a heat map which indicates where the tiger risk is. This map is then sent onwards to an official point person who understands that there is now a tiger risk in some part of the forest and then contacts the local forest ranger who receives the information about where the risk is and then can head out into the forest to see if there are any people at risk from this tiger. Warn them what is going on. and then allow them to move to a different part of the forest where they can be safer. This system is only gonna tell people that there's a high probability there's a tiger in a certain area. This system will never cure all the tiger-human conflict, but it may save one life. 
and that's all that matters.